episode of the Business of Business podcast. I'm your host, Roy. Of course, we are the podcast that brings you a a diverse set of topics um, in the business world from a a wide uh, variety of guests. Want to talk about some things that may be uh, enlightening, maybe things we didn't think about, as well as give you solutions to some things that keep you up at night. Today, uh, we're fortunate enough to have Kwan Karadagi, and uh, he stumbled into fitness and journeyed his way into becoming a master trainer. He wouldn't be where he was today without his mentors and his business partners. He now owns and helps operate gyms. He serves as a guide to help others find their strengths. He also hosts a podcast called Valueverse to talk about the stories of mastery, growth, and success. Quan, thanks you so much for taking time out of your day to be with us. Roy, thanks so much for having me on. I love the work you're doing, and I I strongly believe it's it's important for the world to hear. Well, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, you know, we've had a few conversations uh, prior to this, and I think that, you know, we have... um, a lot of information a lot to unpack so we're just going to jump in first tell us a little bit about your history kind of how you found yourself in you know in this space and um, we'll go from there yeah Roy thanks uh, you know I basically was when I moved to, to Los Angeles I had initially moved there to pursue a career in entertainment and in doing so um, you know you have plans, but you know, as I always joke around the universe, life has different plans for <laughs> exactly. you, right? So right. I stumbled upon working out and I found that I was actually okay at doing that. And I love the the immediate, you know, result from doing something and getting a result from it. Right. So I, I got into fitness um, at that age in my in my late twenties there and mid to late twenties and it just kind of stuck. You know, um, I owe a lot of credit to people around me that that helped me find that and to you know help me allow me to explore that even more. So yeah. I got into it because it first it the changes it made on me and then eventually it would become my my life there and it just sort of fit my personality and everything that I believed in which was you know improving yourself, knowing yourself and working on your strengths and weaknesses and, and then somehow translating that into, into helping others. Yeah, I think a couple of things you've said that really resonate is, uh, number one, finding something that you love, because even if you can make a lot of money, uh, if you're getting up hating your life or hating to do whatever you do, it's just in the end, it's not worth it. So, you know, finding something that resonates. But then the other thing is the mentors and your partners, and it's just surrounding yourself with good, positive people that can, uh, you know, that you trust, that can be, give you some good advice, help you through these tough times, things that maybe you've seen or they've seen before that you're bumping up against. So, uh, you know, to me, those are a couple of the huge foundations of trying to do anything on your own. That's absolutely right. Um, it's funny you brought that specific point up. I posted something on my on my Instagram um, yesterday, my Instagram story. It says, you know, the first step to to mastery is apprenticeship. You know, yes. um, find a mentor and, and level yourself up, right? Um, f- you know, find somebody that's doing kind of what you want to do or that has knowledge in what you're doing and, yeah. and shadow him or her and ask questions and truly take on the role of, of just open-mindedness and, and being that student. So yeah. not, not knowing the answers is okay, not, you know, um, shutting yourself out is the key takeaway there to be able to say, okay, I don't know as much, but I'm willing to learn. I'm willing yeah. to put the work in and show up. Yeah, and I think that's a misconception that we have. A couple of them, number one, is that we, we're we supposed to have all the answers, which, I, you know, even when I look at hiring people, I don't, if somebody tells me they got all the answers, big red flag. What I'm looking for is somebody that knows, hey, I don't have the answer, but I can go get that answer. I know where to find it. I have the resources to acquire that information. Much, much more important. Uh, but also, um, I think that, well, also the our egos don't let us say, I don't know that. But uh, reaching out to other business people in the same space. Now, if you operate next door or same block, there may be a little pushback, but I think if if there's enough geographical distance, there's not a huge business overlap. I think people would be very surprised that business owners are willing to give of their time and their knowledge to help somebody. You know, we all want to help people. That's exactly right. And I'm, you know, guilty as charged of doing that. I'll find people that, you know, that 
are doing something or are successful at doing something, and I'll, I'll either approach or call or reach out yeah. via email. I may not get a response, but I'll try over and over again. And I usually present it in a form of either relating to a topic that they know about or offering mm-hmm. my service in something that I can do um, first and then saying, okay, now after doing that, is there something, can I ask you a question? Right. You know, can I Can I get something a knowledge or anything like that. And most people you'd be surprised are willing to help. You know, when I started off as a, as a personal trainer, um, I went up to the master trainers at the time and I asked them how they became successful at doing what they're doing. And that question, you know, changed my life. It changed my trajectory at at the career because they, they told me what, what they did and they helped me avoid sort of the pitfalls that I was either going to get into or, or, um, you know, stumble upon right. trial and error. So right. I firmly believe in, in, you know, reaching out to businesses, like you said, geographic, as long as there's no competition, direct competition. Um, and then just, just getting, you know, tidbits and nuggets. If you do, yeah. if you do enough of that, you'll save yourself, you know, just so many years of, yeah. of trial and error. Yeah. I knew these guys that they, um, they had a round table of about six or eight of them that they were in similar to different industries, but they would all meet once a month, breakfast or lunch and talk about things. Because even though I may not understand exactly, uh, you know, a problem that's going on inside of a gym, if, if it's more of an employee problem, if I've had this same struggle with this situation and, and now you're bumping into that, it's like, you know, that is a benefit to say, look, you know, here's some things I've done. Here's some things that, you know, don't do this. It didn't work. For, it didn't work well or it didn't end well. But, you know, just those little things, uh, you know, who do you use for a lawyer? Who's your CP? You know, just all these things that we can gain from just taking the time to build those relationships. But, you know, I think like you said, I, I like what you said about you telling them, how, seeing how you could help. I think we can't just take, take, take. We have to be a be. Uh, we have to be in a mindset to give as well. A hundred percent, and I think that's something that's forgotten. A couple of things that that get forgotten or forgotten there rather is, you know, people forget to. Um, they, no one really bothers to ask questions, right. right? They don't. They don't say, "Let me, let me, let me ask this person." Right? You see so many successful people doing something that that you want to do, but no one bothers to say, "Hey, how'd you do it?" Or let me, can I ask you something? Can right. I, can I bench my ego real quick and, and say, Hey, you got something for me here. And the second thing is you got to give to get, you know, right. in business, so many people want something from you and, you know, people are used to that all the time. So if you want to something for yourself, you got to offer something up. And yeah. I always try to go in with that. I'll, I'll go in and it'll be something small, you know, you'll yeah. be amazed. Give somebody a good review you know, on anything. And they'll say, wow, you know, that's nice of them. And now you can in turn, when you do enough of that and not in a superficial sense, but right. in a sense of truly just wanting to collaborate and help each other out. Yeah. Yeah. You can't underestimate the importance of that at all. So, um, the one thing I like about, and the one thing that interested me about you being a guest on here is a couple things is, uh, self-improvement because I know that is a big part of, the fitness industry people come to personal trainers because they want the self-improvement but we can also look at this from a business aspect too is that to be successful you know we have to look at ourselves every day what are we doing what's working what's not working how you know we have to measure how do you measure make these tweaks during our daily life and i, I would venture to say um it's like training if you want to run a marathon or if you want to lose weight I can't come to you and say, you know, it's Sunday, Quan. I'm really looking to lose 100 pounds by next week, you know, maybe the end of the month. And, uh, you know, we have to manage these expectations. But the same with an entrepreneurship. We can't come in and say, hey, I've got an idea for a business and I want it to be, you know, wildly successful next week. You know, we all hope that happens. But this is a journey and it all starts with small steps and really evaluating what we're doing. That's exactly right. You know, and um, for me, it started off as the, the, in the health aspect. When I, when I saw that I had, and w- what I just always tell and why I always tell, you know, physical activity is because it, there's a couple things that happen when you, when you get out of your, your headspace there. So when you start moving or you start working out or doing anything physical, it could be walking. You know, a fascinating phenomenon that happens is, is transient hypofrontality, right? Which means that your prefrontal cortex goes offline, 
part of your brain shuts off and you're allowed to sort of get out of your head a little bit, nice. right? Yeah. And for me, that helps me. That's kind of how it started. I, I was able to work out and I would come back and I'd have a fresh perspective on problems and things. So I always say, you know, go small with, yeah. with something that you know that, that you can build efficacy in. And, uh, you know, physicality really, really helps with that. And then coming back to those to those issues and then revisiting those, yeah. um, and that could be anything on a business level to, you know, um, enrolling in a class, you know, picking up a business book. Um, yeah. Education and strength are going to be the the two things that will always pay back tenfold in dividends for you. So you know, my message there is, is start start getting getting the, you know out of your head by getting into your body a little bit by doing some movement, and, and pick up you know. Um, insightful books and, and and people around you that that help push you to further heights and then work on yourself go small yeah. you know people try to go for the for the big you know um as i've heard quantum leap right they, they right. try to go for this big jump and then they find themselves short and, and then they look back and say well what happened right yeah. and you know nothing's going to change unless you practice it daily so yeah. whatever it is that you can chunk down in a small thing that you can do yeah you're going to build a habit and over time, that thing will just compound enormously. Yeah, yeah. I think the uh, the part that goes on that is consistency as well. There's a, a great book. It's it's kind of older, but it was called um, the Slight Edge. And oh man, my one of my favorite books. It, okay, so you know that yeah. you know that's like this guy. He talks about uh, well, you know, let's just take the 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 weight loss journey. Is that you know if if you eat a Big Mac every day and you quit eating one for one day. It's not going to make that much difference, but if you quit eating it for every day, you know, and, and uh, kind of he uses, I think, baseball a lot. Like, you know, the, the guy that goes out and uh, he hits like 500 extra pitches every day, you know, he does it one day, not much result, but you do that over a year. Now, all of a sudden, you've probably increased your batting average and uh, increased your paycheck as well. 100%. <laughs> and, and that goes for, for everything down to... You know, fitness, it goes down to sales, it goes down to, to every little thing that, that you do. Time yeah. is the X factor, right? right? Everything happens over the course of time, as he says, which kind of Jeff Olson, the, the author yeah. there, um, it's one of my favorite books because that people don't see the long-term view right. of things, right? They, they see the short-term, they see the day-to-day, -day, but you got to step back and say, okay, what happens over time if right. I do this, right? If you go up and, and you make 10 sales calls a day, it might not seem like many calls, but over the, you know, the course of, you know, a week, that's 70 sales calls, right? You're right. going to get two or three sales, right. right? It's just, it's, it's the consistency of doing it daily. And that's, that's the beauty I found in fitness because I knew that if I did that, my, the dividends would pay back tenfold. So it's all about just seeing that geometric long progression that right. as humans is so hard for us to see. Yeah. In a, talking about sales, you know, I usually try to relate that to the agrarian a, agrarian society, you know, back in the 1800s is you planted a seed, you have to cultivate it, and then you can reap the harvest where you know, a lot of times, especially in sales nowadays, it's like, you know, you get the phone calls like, Juan, do you, are you ready to buy? Oh, no, not right this moment. And then it's like, we're off. You know, it's not, we don't cultivate that. We're off to the next, you know, shiny object. But, and it's the same in, you know, in business and I'm sure in fitness as well, as you can't just decide today you're, you, even though you decide today you want to make that change, you have to manage your expectations that, man, this is a long haul. I mean, life That's is, right. a, it's That's a right. way they call it. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So when we set up our marketing and everything like that, <clears throat> we have to take that into account. Because the other thing I see is people jumping around and not giving things long enough to play out. It's like, oh, well, I spent some money on a Facebook ad last week. You know, I ran it for three days, you know, spent $30. And then now I'm off to Instagram and I'm doing this, I'm doing, it's like all over the place instead of maybe just backing up, making a plan, sticking with it. And the, that's the other thing about like the, having more things in, uh, in play, especially when we talk about marketing is that, you know, we have a plan with multiple aspects and then we take this for the long road. You know, maybe we could tweak it as we go, but it's the same in business. I mean, you have to, give it a chance to develop, reach out, you know, people, and especially the higher dollar you get. <clears throat> and I'm sure that you may see this 
diversity in your uh, space that, you know, selling the memberships takes one uh, methodology where when you start selling the pat training packages, it's something totally different. That's absolutely right. <clears throat> and, you know, paying attention to the data, just to touch up on that point is, is an important one, right? Yeah. If you don't give enough time for that data to to accumulate, you, you got nothing to really, you know, right. base it off of. So an exercise is the same thing. People will jump on an exercise <laughs> program, they jump off. Right. And I said, well, you never really gave it a chance to take off there. You, yeah. you got to you gotta stick with it daily. And, and that's, you know, regardless of um, the way that you feel, right? Yeah. I think, you know, E.M. Gray, who wrote the article on the common denominator of success was successful people were willing to do the, um, un the things that unsuccessful people weren't willing to do. Right. And, and that's that's kind of it in a nutshell when it comes to that. You got to be willing to do it and, and continue to do it. And, you know, the training was it came so easy to me because for me it was, oh, well, I believe in this right. and I can I can sell something I believe in. So I was overjoyed in in what that was, because I was basically, you know, as they call it, a transference of enthusiasm. Right. I was yeah. I was giving other people what I had found and what helped me and how that was going to help them. Yeah. So when it came to memberships, it was a smaller sale. And I was like, oh, it's not the kind of the same uh, transference, really. So how do I how do I do that? And it came down to, you know, allowing them to, to feel it and giving them the product that's going to sort of different by connecting with them on a more closer, closer level than just giving them the real estate of the gym and just saying, Hey, good luck out there. <laughs> right. You know, it yeah. was, it was, Hey, you know, let me, I'll, I'll meet you. I'll, I'll tell you which way to go. And I'm here for you to support you. Yeah. And, and just giving that value over and over and yeah. over again until they, they trust you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, trust and like are two important factors in that, but I love that transfer of enthusiasm because it doesn't matter what we do. You know, I'm the same way. I don't, uh, I enjoy sales, but I really need to be selling something that I believe in. I, I couldn't, you know, I wouldn't make a good, because I like to do that. I'm excited about this product and, you know, I want to share it with you. That's what this is all about. I take it that way. Instead of me trying to actually sell you on something, you know, I want to get you to buy in and believe it exactly like I do. That, that's right. And, and I think that just comes from a place of yeah, obviously you want to, you know, make sure that you're you're helping this person in the right way, but just being honest with them right. and 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 you know allowing for the sort of fluff and and all the other things to fade away and just and just helping this person help themselves. And yeah. that's kind of the hardest thing to translate because it's you can't really, you know, everyone's so different, so you're communicating right. to them is so is so key. So you you kind of got to know who you're talking to and and meet them where they are at the same time, right. you know. It's if I talk to someone a certain way and it might not appeal the way that the other person wants to talk, so you got to kind of know what angles they want and yeah. what they're looking for, you know? Yeah. And we, t I talk about that a lot too, is the, uh, that exploratory visit, whether, you know, like you, maybe it's in person, maybe it's on the phone, but you have to ask the right questions and you have to ask thoughtful questions because when, you know, when somebody calls you and says, Hey, I want to train. Okay there's all kinds of, I want to train to run a marathon, an Ironman. Maybe I just want to train. So when I walk up the stairs, I'm not huffing and puffing, you know, maybe I want to make this an integral part of weight loss. There's so many different variables, but I think that's where in sales, we kind of fall short is we don't ask all these questions so that we can try to focus our, you know, our conversation on what is it that you really want? What is it you really need? What is my product really going to do to fix for you. That's exactly right. And for me, a big part of it was I would get so the first, you know, couple of years that I got into it or the first couple uh, weeks, excuse me, I would, I would be so excited about it that, you know, I was used to just talking to people and, and that was kind of it. And I think the most important thing for me was that after every, you know, consultation or something that I had, I would always sit back and the ones that didn't buy, I would ask myself, what, what got missed? What didn't I listen to? Yeah. And, and what did I um, either not go over? So that improvement in itself is kind of what helped me sort of, you know, um, get better at each one and, and do a better job of listening or doing a better job of allaying someone's fears or, or building that trust. And, and that's kind of, you know, the message and improvement there is it, it doesn't, you know, um, ignore sales either. Sales requires you to, 
to constantly revisit and and make yourself sharp and, and better, right? Which kind of leads to, to the reinvention. But I had gotten so good at talking about it and being happy that when someone was finally ready to buy, I think it was the first one, I was shocked. I thought <laughs> I wasn't really expecting that. Right. I thought we were just going to talk. I was getting ready for you to leave. And um, I was I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to use the computer right. So I had to run around, try to find my manager. And then, you know, I thought, wow, you know, this person kind of believes in me because you're yeah. you're the product, right? As the personal trainer, you're the person that is going to, you're selling yourself, you're selling your services, your your ideologies, your, your science, right? Your philosophy. Right. So get it, getting that was, was, um, was very awakening because then I knew I had to deliver on that. And that's, right. that's the important thing. It's, it doesn't end at the sale. You got to go the extra mile to deliver, you yeah. know, your product and, and make sure that they, they, they see that and they, they get what they paid for. Yeah. I think, um, that's an important part too. You know, when we're talking about asking the right questions, it helps us with that follow up if they don't buy on the first go around. And, you know, the reality is, I think the smaller dollars you get, you probably that sales cycle is a lot small, uh, quicker than high dollar. But I don't know, the last estimates I saw is that you have to touch somebody maybe eight to 12 times before they buy, you know, on average. So, you know, always kind of plan, okay, if this doesn't close today, how can I follow up? And if we ask these thoughtful questions, then I think it makes it easier to have a, not just a, hey, are you ready to buy yet? Are you ready to buy now? But more of, hey, are, did you find another gym? Are you, uh, you know, have you started walking? Are you doing anything? You know, whatever their issue was, you can kind of address that. Or something else I like to do is just, um, maybe I find an article in a news or in a, you know, online nowadays, but you know, you find an article that speaks to what they were thinking about. And so I just, uh, I'll have like five prospects or maybe even customers that I will send this email to and say, Hey, I saw this. I thought you might enjoy it. And then here are three bullet points that I really found interesting. I thought you would like, you know, just like that, just stay in front of them. Th that's exactly right. I think you nailed it. And I read a simple quote that, by Gary V that stuck with me and it was it's you know still repeats to me this day it's it was so easy and simple it's give value give value give value ask right, right? and um, for me in the gym it was finding someone um, and saying hey I like what you're doing I try this you know hey this is cool you know what do you need help with right what what is it that you're looking for okay great and not trying to press your agenda all the time you know right. just just keep giving value keep yeah. giving value and then eventually that person says you know what this guy's got a lot of knowledge. He, he can probably help me a little bit. Right. They, they got to come to that realization, yeah. you know, and once they come to that realization, they trust you. They say, OK, now I'm ready to go. And now you have someone that's that's bought in and then you're going to make great strides and have a beautiful relationship together. Yeah. Yeah. Two points, I think there is one is that um, sometimes when we give this knowledge and advice, um, we can actually show people how difficult this situation is and they come to realize that, Hey, I really do need this guy's help. You know, a lot of times people are scared of like, Oh, I don't want to give anything away. But then, you know, if it's like a, well, just like in your business, you know, I can uh, come in and sit down and work on a machine probably without much help. But I've had a personal trainer that he designed so many other activities for us to do didn't have any, it wasn't him standing there counting reps on a weight machine. I mean, he had all these contraptions that he had me working on. And so, you know, the value in that for me was that he had all this knowledge of all these different things you can do. And so sometimes sharing that knowledge, I think really leads people to the point of, man, I need this guy. I'm, you know, I'm not doing it on my own. And the second point, uh, sorry, I didn't, uh, one more thing I was going to say about that is that sometimes it's that reverse psychology too. Um, uh, I've actually had people that, yeah, they were kind of waving iffy in this. And I said, well, um, maybe this product isn't right for you. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly right. I've, I've read that before and, yeah. and allowing them to say, well, wait a minute, you know, why, why is that? Why yeah. isn't it right for me? Yeah. And, right. and that's a great question they can ask themselves, right? Exactly. Yeah. We just, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just not a pushy, uh, I don't want to, I want, because what I have found is when you push somebody to be a client, they usually turn out, it turns out bad. It just is not a good relationship as much as 
like you said, if they trust you, they want to work with you, then life is pretty good after that. So I think you have to, you know, my personal opinion, I know there's some people like, ah, you got to, you got to be pushing, you got to be hammering them all the time. Why aren't you buying? You can afford it, you know, all that. But we never know other people's positions. And so whether it's time, money, whatever, you know, you have to be respectful of that. That's right. The, the mentor that I had, um, you know, Joshua Elmore, and then later with my memberships was, was Dan Sussman. They, they both had a different way of doing things, but essentially got back down to, they, they both were, you know, excited about what they they believed in. And um, one guy was great at being in the moment, being excited, truly excited about it because he believed in it. And then he, he really did a good job of simplifying what that was, right? So not just not a lot of just talk and peaks and valleys and, and, and emotion, but rather, you know, clarifying that message for right. them so that they could grasp it and say, okay, this, this makes sense because less is more for him. And then, you know, my, my mentor, Josh, would, would do a better job of getting them emotionally bought in yeah. as to seeing why this product was going to help their, their future and what, and what they want yeah. to do. So, so giving them the, the promise of the future and what, what that holds for them, if they, if they do that is, is paramount yeah. as well. So, um, you know, David and I, as well as my other business partner, he kind of, he's in the, in the way of explaining things better and helping you choose options to, to find out what it is. So there's no right or wrong. It's, it's what those strengths are for you. Right. And then finding out how to just, you know, really use those without, going back to and trying a bunch of other things that that may or may not work yeah the other thing you know again putting our egos aside is maybe um if we're struggling or if we're new is have somebody listen in on these uh sales calls and i've done that before when i'm new and i, I again and i don't try to hide it because if i got if if i was trying to sell fitness to you right now i would struggle and it would be hard and you could as a customer you would see that. I was like, wow, what's wrong with this guy? Whereas you can just have somebody look, like, look, you know, my, my colleague, my manager, you know, I'm new. He's going to sit down, make sure I cover everything right. But that's how you learn because, you know, if they're good, they will let you go through the process. And then you can debrief after that to say, here's what you could do better. Here's how you could tweak that. And I like the other thing you said there was, paint that picture of what does success look like i mean you know if if you want to run a marathon it's crossing the uh finish line yeah you know I, I did it but what does success look like if you use this that's right and one of the most important things to do too is is to get you know a lot of people wait and they they, they push the product and then you get you know these objections right or mm -hmm. these people that say you know what i don't know um an important thing is to get ahead of those mm -hmm. and you know find out what those are in the very beginning. That way you can address them and not run into them later on, right? So um, for me, you know, one of my messages is never underestimate the, the power of repetition. You know, yeah. it's all, fitness translates to so many things in business. And one of the things that you said that was so true was having someone listen in and then run that. Like I, I, I'm a, just a strong believer in it. I would, I would replay or role play with my, my business partners and my mentors man, Roy, like hundreds of times yeah. until I got, until I was just, you know, what they call, I think it's a psychologist theory, which is unconscious competent, right? Yeah. They, you get so, you know, used to doing something that you can do it in, you know, if you're asleep, right? right. Un unconscious, right? right? And I, I just did that over and over and over again until I was just so familiar. I had, I knew the answers that were going to come yeah. and I was prepared to have an answer for those answers. Right. right so right. It, it was, it was really just, just laying that groundwork. You can't, you know, you're going to save so much time and nobody likes role playing. It's one of the most boring things where you say, okay, yeah, Sally, yeah. I'm ready to buy this thing. And, yeah. But it's, it's so important because you, you find out how to get across obstacles, how to, to help them and to, to really, truly um, get to the solution. Yeah, I mean, you think about it. We, in sports, we practice and practice and practice, and we practice, you know, take baseball. What happens, you know, okay, there's a man on first this time. The guy hits it to the left. What do we do? Now you got first and third. You know, you work through all of these scenarios. So, well, you know, you work as a team, but you also – as an individual, you have to think, okay, in this situation, this is what I'm going to do. And it's the same with fielding, you know, questions from sales or, or from prospects, you know, you want to be able to flow, be able to give them a, you know, a good answer. Not the other thing too, is I, 
I much more um, I have much more respect for salespeople that say, you know what, I don't know the answer to that versus <laughs> making something up. But, you know, I think if you're prepared, then you don't put yourself in that position. But, you know, you kind of like you said, you're prepared for what uh, objections are going to be thrown at you. Which circles back to the whole, if you believe in it, all of this makes sense. Right. If you're selling something you don't believe in, don't do it. Right. Because you're going to feel bad. You're going to feel guilty about it. And that's that's kind of, that's not what sales is, right? right. Sales is, is the transference of enthusiasm as well as influencing someone to, to help them in a way that will better their life truly, yeah. you know, and, and save them time or save them money or, or buy them in this case of fitness health and, right. and a longer shelf life. Right. So, um, that's a good transition to what else I just written down was, uh, self care. And, um, of course this is, it's easy for you because your business is self care. <laughs> but I think it's a it's a big thing for entrepreneurs and for businessmen and I have to be the first to put myself under that bus and say, you know, I don't uh there are things I do to push myself in probably unhealthy ways that you know, like uh not getting enough sleep, feeling like if I just stay up late to complete this project, but what I have found in the past is that that leads to un to other unhealthy habits like, you know, eating bad, trying to get that energy pop and things like that. So talk for a minute about how self-care can really uh, help us perform better in, in business as well. hundred percent. I think, you know, I read recently, I'm reading this book called Ego is the Enemy, and I never really put it this <laughs> way, but it was, he basically says, Ryan Holiday says, if you can't manage yourself, you can't manage others. Right. Right? And I thought that was that was profound because it touched back on some of the things as a leader in any business or anything that you're doing, be it CEO, you know, um, a sales advisor from even a lower level. I, I firmly believe everyone in their circle of influence or, or immediate circle is a leader in, in that regard. You right. know, um, so in that you, you have to take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. Right. And for me, I, I have systems where everything is, is routinely based, right? So, you know, I, I started off in working out. I still do that five, six days a week. And then, so I wake up in the morning that the first thing I do is um, I'm guilty of making, you know, a pot of coffee. And so I get that going. But the first thing I do is I immediately jump into my reading so that I, I read about 30 pages in, in the morning. Um, and some, there's days I don't want to do it, right. you know, but, but I, I make myself do it because you're only of value to those around you, depending on how much value you put in yourself and how much yeah. you, you basically, you know, uh, work on yourself. So, so I do that. And then my second thing is I, I always meditate in the mornings, right? So I do about a 10 minute, just, you know, mindful meditation on the Headspace app, where I just sit, no thoughts, no anything. I try not to have thoughts, impossible. But you just kind of just just sit with yourself there and have that moment to slow everything down and be in the moment, right? Yeah. And then I do my writing, so I journal, do a little gratitude journal, things that I'm thankful for. Then I go get my workout. And usually I'm done with all that by around on a good day around 7, 30, 8 a.m., right? So then I'm like, okay, now I can take on the day. I can do things and do that. So my, my message there is, is finding a routine that works right. uh, for you in the terms of having a physicality in there. It could be the easiest thing as, as walking. Right. Walk for 10 minutes, you know, just, just get outside, look at some trees, look at some stuff out there, come back in, you know, do a little bit of, of, of self-care to your thoughts and what you're feeling that day, write them down, yeah. write down one goal that you want to do. And, and my biggest message to everybody there is just go small. Yeah. Don't create big, big standards for yourself because, you know, and I hate to sound like, anything that's negative there, but it's just sure to, to, to fall apart when you create big, you know, right. um, quantum leaps that you got to do it, it becomes chore like, yeah. Yeah. And then you don't want to do them. Yeah. And then you say, well, you know, that's, that's it. It falls off. It's over. So be kind to yourself, be allow yourself the opportunity to succeed by, by truly just, you know, lowering yeah. that expectation. So yeah. And self-care is critical. Yeah. And I think be kind to yourself too, that, uh, you know, sometimes we can, have that list of to do's and we get, you know, if we got 10 things on there, <clears throat> maybe we get seven things done. We wanted to do today and we spend our time beating ourselves up over these three that we didn't. And, you know, if we prioritize and we got the most important ones first, it's like, 
be kind. You got seven done. Pat yourself on the back. Say it was an awesome day because if you could bat 700, you'd be making, you know, a gazillion dollars in the major leagues. But, uh, you know, we just have to. Uh, and, and I like the part about being mindful. I have recently started meditating. And, you know, what I will tell people is don't again, don't be too hard on yourself and give yourself time because with me, it's hard to turn the thoughts off and sit there and not have thoughts and you just have to keep redirecting. But what I have found is I have better, some days are better than others. And if you just stay after it, I think on average you will have better days than, than worse days, but it's, it's difficult. That's exactly right. And I think that that's a beautiful message there on the, on the average tip. And also, you know, it's all about just accumulating small wins, right. you know, create as many small wins for yourself as possible on a daily basis. And you'll be surprised, you know, over the course of six months to a year, it's going to show up big time for you. Right. So, you know, getting out in nature, you know, in and of itself, I, I just recently read that you're supposed to spend either 20 minutes, three days a week, five hours a, um, a week, uh, or three days out of the year, five hours a month or three days out of the year. So that's, that's kind of 25 and three, and that's supposed to have these effects on your, on your mind to sort of slow you down and get you in a place of, of, you know, better optimization. It's all about getting to that place where you're able to perform. Right. And that could be something as easy as going to sleep on time, you know, and it's, you've got to prioritize yourself and, and able and, and in order to do those other things well, yeah. And one thing I've started doing is I usually like to listen to uh, podcast or to music while I walk. But um, so if I'm on, if I'm at the gym on the treadmill, I still do it. But when I'm walking around the neighborhood, I've gotten where I take them off and just try to listen to the nature and just have that quiet time. Because really, uh, you know, I do a lot of strategic work, so it's a lot of problem solving. Sometimes when I run into a block. If I just get up and go walk, it clears my head that it's like the the solution comes to you or maybe creative thinking. If you're, you know, a new product line or something that you want to do different, it just uh, it seemed like everything just comes so much easier when you take the time to kind of get out in front of a computer screen and let your head get clear for a minute. That's right. You know, these <clears throat> these top athletes and, you know, top business people, you know, they, they all have ways that they're they're in a constant state of this productivity on this and they enjoy it right right? and how how do they do that not not everyone is like that people all everyone has problems everyone has personal things going on um but you know in fitness and this translates to business and life um, i always say you know the growth happens when you rest right when you work a muscle um and you go home and you you have proper nutrients and you sleep that muscle grows back stronger it's the same thing in business and life if you if you work all the time and work yourself to the bone first of all you're not going to have a great attitude and mindset after three four five (laughs) years of that and second you you know you're going to get tired you're going to need sleep you're going to need rest you're going to need to reset i know because i worked myself to the point of exhaustion, you know, yeah. 60, 70 hour work weeks. I had to learn the hard way and say, yeah. hey, it's time to slow down. Right. You know, you're getting these messages of, you know, not feeling too hot all the time or not wanting to go to work. These are signals. Yeah. So you got to strategize and like you said, problem solve and say, OK, I need to step away a little bit so, so I can come in a little bit harder there and then be, be more effective. So right. take that time out for yourself. hundred percent. Yeah, because that's why we do this is, <clears throat> you know, we do this to people try to get to be entrepreneurs because they want more control over their time and what they do. But then it's unfortunate because we, again, I have, I'm guilty of this at times you get into the thing instead of the dog wagging the tail, the tail's wagging the dog. And you know, you're letting the business uh, move you around on the chessboard instead of you taking control and moving the business. So always take time because that's what it's worth in the end. It's those relationships. And, you know, we don't want to lose trying to build a business for our family, but then lose our family in the process of that because we're not paying attention to them. So, well, yeah, well said on that. I never really thought about that, but that's exactly, that's exactly it. Yeah. 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 Well, Quan, I appreciate you taking time out of your day. It's been an awesome conversation. Um, So tell me this, what is a tool or a habit, something that you do every day, that really adds a lot of value to your life? 
man, you know, outside the uh, the meditation and the, and the working out and, and the exercise, I'd say you know connecting with people yeah. is is one of the most important things that that we can do as human beings. You know, you can have the best routine in the world. Um, if you're not connecting with somebody or having a meaningful conversation, you know, for me, sitting in this podcast with you is is one of the highlights of my day because it allows me to, to connect with another individual that we can, you know, share thoughts and, and, and feelings right. with. And that's that's what we're meant to do, you know. So, you know, Intel has this um, philosophy with they call it wandering about. So, the, you know, a person from a department will go to another department and, and sort of wander and talk to the other individuals mm-hmm. in that department. They come back, you know, with more perspectives. And the gym is the same way. You know, I was joking around with a couple of buddies and I was holding the door. I was working out the other day and I held the door for a friend of mine. I said, you know, welcome back to the uh, the school of strength and improvement. You know, <laughs> yeah. he had let out a chuckle. And I went out to the gym floor and I connected with, a, you know, uh, one of our members there who's a, who's a Marine. And we, we had talked and we were talking about sort of the, the, the things of the struggles and the things we were getting through. And the answers are out there with those fellow individuals that, you know, are, are sharing the same thing you are. And you're not alone, you know. You just go out and, and yeah. meet them and, and talk and have, strike up a conversation with somebody in your department and, and get to that humanistic level. Right. Yep. That human contact, it's um, it's very important. You know, we can spend so much time in front of our computer screens that we kind of lose that ability if we're not careful. So, no, that's, that's good advice. Uh, so what kind of people do you like to work with? How can you help them? And of course, how can they reach out and get a hold of you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm always in, in the space that I'm in now is I'm trying to add as much value as I can, um, you know, to give back what I learned and hopefully give back what I learned um, and basically, um, you know, add as much uh, value in their lives in terms of business, you know, health and in, in terms of that. So I have a podcast called Value Verse where we talk about the journey, the storytelling um, of, of individuals that, like yourself, have have succeeded on a, on a business level, on a life level, to help others see that it's either possible or to gain insight from. And, um, you know, I'm on Instagram, at Valueverse is the best way to reach me. So you can always shoot me a message there or um, www.thevalueverse.com. So I'm, I'm always open to, to adding value and to anyone that approaches me in any way that I can. And if I can't, then I'll point you in the direction of somebody that, that can, you know, so um, that's kind of the, what I live by because, you know, someone did that for me. So right. it would only be right if I could do that. Yeah. We need to pay it back. That's for sure. Yeah. It just, you know, I think something I was told long ago is that we are successful because other people want to, want to see us be successful, which means, you know, we've got people behind us helping us out and, I think it's great anytime we can help other people. But uh, yeah, y'all go check out Valueverse. I uh, appreciate the time very much. That's going to do it for another episode of the Business of Business podcast. Of course, you can find us on all the major podcast platforms, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Google, Spotify. If we're not on one that you listen to, uh, reach out. I'd be glad to get you added. We're also at the business of business podcast.com all the major social media platforms uh probably hang out at instagram more than anywhere else and a uh, video of this interview will go up on youtube once it goes live so until next time take care of yourself and take care of your business